Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I am featuring the June of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main called Waving Hello and sharing how I made 21 cards with this gorgeous under the sea themed kit. I recently shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of this beautiful kit. So if you missed that video, I will link it in the description box below. But here's a brief look at what all is included. The Crafty Courtyard Kits are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. You can sign up to receive the kits each month and the base price is only $34.99. They usually ship around the 15th and shipping is based on where you live. You can still purchase the kits through the end of the month unless it sells out and I have a feeling this one is going to sell out quick. So if you've been contemplating on subscribing, you will definitely want to subscribe this month by the 14th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to ensure that you'll receive one. Plus, if you're a monthly subscriber, you'll always receive 15% off of products in the store. So it's definitely worth it to sign up. If you'd like to purchase, I will have links down in the description box. These are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. For some of the cards I'm sharing today, I'm using the 6x6 4 Sheet Wonder PDF file that I'm offering to subscribers of my YouTube channel to download for free. I'm offering this as a preview to see what all access and VIP patrons receive with the Kendra's Card Challenges bonus printables as part of their Patreon membership benefits. I'll talk more about this in a bit, but let me first show you how I typically tackle making a bunch of cards using the Crafty Courtyard kits. I usually start by taking the stamp set and stamping out a bunch of images to use as the focal points of my cards. Since I haven't used these stamps before, you see me placing my hands on top to help remove some of the stickiness from manufacturing. But I'm using my Misty stamping platform and I place all of the stamps down on a half sheet of cardstock. I like to use Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock if I know I'll be coloring with Copic markers. I make sure to space them out far enough so that I can use the coordinating dies to cut them all out. I love how all of the sea creatures have flowers. It will allow me to tie in all of the colors in the color palette when I'm coloring. I'm using Pink and Main Asphalt Premium Black Ink to start and I love this handle with the Velcro that you can attach to the back of the ink pads to help apply the ink. This handle comes free if you purchase the bundle of inks. And since my stamps are new, I'm stamping these images several times. But these ink pads have a foam pad and they're super juicy, which I love because it will typically only have to be stamped once. I'm using an air hockey table pusher to help apply pressure. I stamped a few sheets with the teal colored ink called Lakeside also. But I'm stamping several sheets so that I'll have a bunch of images ready for my cards. Now that I have all these sheets stamped out, I'm using the coordinating dies to cut them out. And I wanna share a tip for saving time on using cutting dies. I've taped each one down using some low tack tape, and I've already run these through my Spellbinders die cutting machine. So you'll see me carefully releasing the images, trying to keep the die and the tape in place. And the reason for this is so I can use this as a template to quickly cut out the others. Since the images were all stamped in the same place on each of the sheets, all I need to do now is line them up behind this template. Then I'll run it through my die cutting machine again. The dies will cut the sheet behind the template and this saves so much time and aggravation. You don't have to constantly move the dies and tape them down each time. So I went ahead and cut out all of my images and now I'm gonna figure out what colors to use to color them up and have those ready. I, I will usually use the color palette to try to match them up with the Copic markers that are close in color. For the dress shop color, I used RV17 and RV19. Those are the closest that I could find. For the salon pink color, I used R83 and R85. Those are pretty close. And then for sunny sky, the only color I have that works for this like baby bluish color is B21. For lakeside, I'm using BG13. BG11 which is a lighter shade and then I bring in BG15 which is a little bit darker than BG13. And then for Riverwalk I'm using BG45 and for the tan pebble color I'm using E33 for the darker shade and E30 for the lighter shade. 
You'll also see me add in a couple of extra colors like some greens and yellows if you take a look at the images on my finished cards. Now for the pattern paper, I've taken out all of the different patterns that come in the paper pad and there are six colors. What I like to do is sort these out by pattern to see what I'm working with. These are all of the tiny dot patterns in the six different colors. There's two with mermaid scales and here's what's on the back side. And then there's these two blue sheets with the swirls of fish that match the stencil. And then this wood plank and then a tan fabric pattern. But on the backs of these are the waves, this waves pattern. And then on the back of the mermaid scales is the lighter tan. And on the back of one of the dots is the wave pattern in the river walk color. So these patterns here have multiple colors and so I know that I want to use them to be able to pull in several of these so that I can tie all of the colors together. I've selected these four patterns here to use as my four sheets with the cutting guides on the printable. Notice how they all have the tiny dots pattern on one side and two of them have patterns with multiple colors. I'm going to pair these two together and then the other two together. So this first pair, I'm going to use the cutting guide for papers A and B. You cut both of these papers the same according to the guide. So I'm just going to line these up and cut them at the same time. Now I'm looking at this waves pattern and because I want them facing a certain way, I want to make sure I cut this the way I want it so that it matches how it should go on the sketch. The first cut is indicated by scissors on the printable and you just want to cut an inch off the bottom first and I'll set those aside and then I'm turning this and cutting at three and three quarter inches. And then I'm going to set those rectangles on the right to the side and now I'm going to measure at one and a quarter on my paper trimmer and mark that with a pencil so that I'll know where to cut. You can use a ruler, but I couldn't find my ruler. It was buried under a bunch of stuff. But um, what I'm going to do now is turn it so that the top left hand corner is in the cut groove. And I'm going to line that up with that pencil mark and just make that cut. And so because I'm cutting these at the same time, it doesn't really matter if you're off just a little bit on your cutting, but they'll both be the same size. But I plan to mix and match. And since the cutting guide for papers C and D is pretty much the same except for the top right corners, you can mix and match even more. But I'll share this here in a few minutes. But the last thing that needs to be done is to cut that bottom one inch strip so that you'll have uh, three quarters of an inch cut off so that you're left with a five and a quarter inch strip. And then you'll save those little pieces for the pennants for sketch five. Now I've already started cutting papers C and D but this is basically the exact same as what I did for paper A and B. I'm cutting off the one inch strip and then I'll go ahead and cut off that small three quarter inch piece. And now that I have the bottom cut off, I'm gonna turn it and cut at three and three quarter inches and do the exact same thing that I did for papers A and B. So I'll measure at one and a quarter inches and mark it with a pencil. And then I'll make the diagonal cut the same as before, cutting both pieces at the same time. And now the only thing that's different is that the rectangle piece that's on the right hand side, this is going to need to be cut. So we're going to cut this on the skinny side and cut at one and a half inches. So that will leave a three quarter inch strip on the right. Now that all of my papers are cut, I'm going to sort all of these pieces into eight different piles. So I've laid out eight different cellophane bags for each of the cards. If you look at the sketches, there's seven, but two of them are alternates, meaning that you can use the pieces in a different way. And the first card sketch is to be used for cards one through four. So these are the ones with the diagonals. But this is where you will use the circled numbers that's on the cutting guides to sort each of the pieces. So I'm taking all of this striped pattern, which is what I use for paper B, and I'm placing the pieces in the card number pile as indicated on the guide. And I'll do the same thing for paper A, and then I'll take the pieces for paper C and D and sort those according to the guide as well. 
And then this is where the mixing and matching comes in. So you'll kind of see me flipping some of these over a little bit, trying to figure out what I want to do. But uh, for card five, I'm going to look at both sides of the papers and decide which big piece I want to pair together with that one and a half inch piece. So you can swap that out. And then for the skinnier pieces that measure three quarters of an inch, those will be for card six. Again, I'm just looking at the different patterns, trying to decide what I want to go where. And at this point, I was only planning to make eight cards, but then I looked back through the paper pad and I figured I would do another set of eight cards using the same cutting guides and sketches. And that way I could mix and match even more. So I picked out these four patterns here and I cut those the exact same way. And I've sped this up quite a bit, but uh, basically it's the exact same instructions. And then I'm gonna sort all of these pieces into those same piles and then that way I can mix and match. While I'm cutting these I'll explain a little more about my quarterly card making challenges in case you're not familiar. I offer a free printable similar to the one that I'm offering for this free preview and this PDF file contains cutting guides for six sheets of six by six paper and 15 card sketches showing how you can make a bunch of cards with little to no scraps. This quarterly challenge Crafters can have a chance to win over $1,000 worth of prizes, including a $25 gift certificate to Pink and Main. I will link a video below in the description box so you can get all of the details about the current challenge. But I also offer additional bonus printables each month on my Patreon page, and these are separate from my quarterly card challenge free printable. These bonus printables include card tutorials, one sheet wonders, and more. I'm offering this free preview of the 6x6 4 Sheet Wonder so you can get an idea of what the bonus printables include as part of the membership program over on my Patreon page. I create these printables to show how you can make the most of your 6x6 papers and really stretch your card making supplies. And these work perfectly with the Crafty Courtyard kits. So here you see me looking at the different options I have for combining the pieces together for each card. And what's great about that top triangle piece from sketch one is that you can flip it over and use either side. So I really love this set of cutting guides because you really can make a bunch of different cards using the same sketch, but changing it up with different patterns just by swapping some out or just flipping over that top triangle piece. Now off camera, I grabbed eight additional cellophane bags and I placed the extra pieces that I paired together for this separate set of eight cards. Once I had all the pieces together in one bag, I took the colored cardstock that came in the kit and I cut all of the four by five and a quarter inch layers. If you look at the card sketches on the printable, you'll see that all of the card sketches except sketch four, it calls for layers. So since I have two sets here, I need to make 10 layers or mats, making sure the color matches the colors in the pattern paper for each card. I also cut all of my card bases. And just for your information, I ended up using all of the cardstock that came in the kit, plus five sheets of white heavyweight cardstock from my stash to create the 16 cards. My next step is to take all of the die cut images and figure out what I want to place on each card and also cut out my shapes. And I did all of this off camera. Now I'll show you how I put together each of the card sketches. Not all 16 cards, just a few different layouts for each of the card sketches that you see on the printable. I will have the card sketch up in the corner on the screen here, but I will also show some variations of the sketches that you can do with the different elements and shapes on the cards. I've pulled in a few pink and main shape dies from my stash. I'll have the different products I used linked down in the description box below. If you don't like to see the line where the two papers meet up, you could use cardstock strips or some of those peel off stickers. You'll see me use both on my cards. I use the layers to cut out the shapes I'm using on the front of the cards. The pattern paper is thick enough so you don't have to worry about seeing a dip or that it's indented in where the shapes were cut out. If I were using thinner paper, I would use some scrap paper to fill in the holes. But I went ahead and colored in most of the images off camera so this video wouldn't be too long. But to add dimension, I added some foam tape to the back of the circle. This is the big roll of tape that has 108 feet for only $20 from Pink and Main. I stamped congrats on the right side of the circle and placed the fish on top.
And for the parts of the fish hanging over the edge of the circle, I added some Colal 3D glue gel underneath to keep it from bending. This glue gel takes a while to dry, so you definitely want to give it at least 24 hours to dry. And to finish it off, I added a glitter enamel dot. This is another variation of sketch one. Again, I cut out a circle from the bottom layer that I'll be using on another card. And I'm using a quarter inch cardstock strip on that seam there. And here I'm just playing around with the layout since that seahorse is a lot bigger than my blue circle. But I decided on putting the circle down on the bottom with that sentiment banner across the middle. And I put the seahorse toward the top left. And for this card, I ended up adding foam tape to the back of the seahorse for dimension. And these are my designated scissors for just cutting stuff with adhesive on it. And they are really sticky. But I added an enamel dot to each end of the banner. And I added some touch of gloss to the seahorse's eye to finish it off. All of these cards use Sketch 1. So they're basically going to be put together the same as these two. Just using different pattern papers. So rather than me showing the process of gluing those down, I'll just show you the finished cards. Now this is sketch two. It has the one and a half inch piece on the left and the two and a quarter inch piece on the right and I cut two one quarter inch strips of cardstock and I wanted to add the blue to help break up all of that tan and help tie the colors together with uh, that's in the plaid and of course I colored all of the images to match the colors in each of the pattern papers again I used foam tape to pop up the seahorse and the sentiment and then to finish off the card I added three glitter enamel dots up in the top right hand corner. Now this next card is just a variation of sketch two using a couple of layered circles and a shape die for the sentiment between the two fish. I won't put this together on camera since it's pretty much the same as the last one but here's the finished card. With this next card, I used the Pink and Main Square Frame Dies, the zigzag edge one. This is Sketch 7 on the printable. It's a variation using the same pattern paper pieces as Card Sketch 3. The only difference is the placement of the 3 quarter inch strips. And I apologize for the glare here, but you'll see the finished card without the cellophane bag here in a bit. But I'm only going to show the assembly for Sketch 7 since it has more elements on it. A sketch three is pretty straightforward. I used glue and a fine tip bottle to add to the back of the zigzag piece. I stamped thank you in lakeside ink on a stitched rectangle die that I believe came in a previous crafty courtyard kit. And I added it to the tan square in the middle with foam tape. And I also popped up the turtle with that foam tape. And then to finish it off, I added three glitter enamel dots in the top right corner. Now since I used the lakeside ink to stamp the turtle, I added some black to the turtle's eye and then added a dot of white using a white gel pen. And then I added a touch of gloss on top. these two cards use sketch four this has four one inch strips with a large circle in the center it doesn't have a layer so they're glued directly onto the card base and for this one i used the hot pink dress shop cardstock that came in the kit for the base and four of the tiny dot pattern paper strips since this is pretty straightforward i will assemble this other one i used the sunny sky cardstock for the base and I struggled with which side of the pattern papers to use for this one. I like the tan waves, but since I'm using the scales in the beach colors and the teal dots, I figured I'd use the teal scales to try to tie it all together. Getting it straight is probably the trickiest part, which is why I use liquid glue. That way I can scoot it where I need to before it dries. And since the patterns are so different, I opted to cut some cardstock strips to break break up the patterns 
and I think I added too much glue so I'm laying my misty stamping platform on top to keep it flat while drying and I stamped congrats with the dress shop ink in the center of the circle and I placed the fish similar to how I did on the other card and I added some foam tape to the back of the circle and also on parts of the fish hanging over the edge and I finished this off with a touch of gloss on the fish eyes. And this is sketch five. And since I'm making two sets and I had those extra little pieces for the pennants, I added an extra pennant to this banner. I alternated the dot pattern and the wave pattern. I really like the teal wave pattern across the bottom. I added a strip of pink cardstock on top of the edge below the pennants and I stamped the sentiment on the blue layer in black ink. I had some teal and white twine in my stash so I made two small bows and I cut a strip to go across the top for the pennants. The trickiest part for this card is probably the twine. I used my fine tip glue to draw a curved line to attach the twine to and I got glue all over my fingers in the process. So the pennants kept sticking to me while I was trying to glue them down. But I added the two bows in the corners and then I added the jellyfish uh, across the bottom at an angle. And then I added a touch of gloss on top of the entire jellyfish. And I really, really love how this one turned out. Then the final card is the alternate for card eight. And it uses sketch six from the printable. And it's very similar to sketch seven. The only difference is the bottom strip is one piece instead of two. And the layer shows at the top instead of having another pattern paper piece. And also there's a banner in the top right corner. So if you're only making one set and you decide to use the alternative sketch instead of sketch five, you will have the extra banner pieces. And so here is the finished card. Now because this crafty courtyard kit came with the bonus foilable toner panels, I had to break out my mink machine of course. And I used these two cheer foils here. The silver one is called Glitzy Silver and the teal one is called Lots of Love. And I also used cobalt blue even though I didn't show it. But I cut these into four and a quarter inch panels and I have them prepped and ready to go. Now I set my mink machine to three and I let it heat up. This will light up green when it's ready. You can also use a laminator but you'll want to make sure that you let it heat up for about 20 to 30 minutes first just to make sure it's hot enough. And now that this is heated up and it's ready to go, I'm placing as many panels as I can fit inside the transfer folder. And I like to use a sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock to help hold all of the panels so that the transfer folder isn't floppy. Now I sped this video up eight times, so this process doesn't normally go this fast. But now for my favorite part, the reveal. And these turned out beautiful. And I'm saving the foil that I peeled off so that I can use the reverse side on some toner sheets, which I'll show you, show you here in a minute. Now Pink and Main carries these rainbow toner sheets so that when you use the reverse side, it doesn't have to always have black showing through. I've selected the teal green and the blue sheets, and I'm taking a makeup brush to dust off any specks. And now I'm placing the reverse side on top. And to make sure none of the toner sheet is exposed to the transfer folder, I'm placing copy paper on top. And I should have only used two sheets instead of three because the lines from that third sheet ended up showing up on my panels. But I'm glad I used the paper because the exposed toner color transferred onto the copy paper instead of the transfer folder. But here is the silver and blue sheet. You can see that that line of the copy paper going across the middle. I'll probably try to figure out a way to still use it and maybe cover up the line with an image or a shape or something. But these are all of the foiled panels and the reverse images that I foiled on the toner sheets. I really love these two teal ones and this silver turned out really pretty also. But the cobalt blue is probably my favorite as is. Most of these reverse image ones have specks on them but they're still usable. Not sure how I feel about these glitzy silver ones, but I really love how this teal on the pink turned out. So I definitely plan to use this to make a card. 
So here I have a cobalt blue foiled panel and I'm taking the lakeside ink and I'm blending on this panel using the mini ergonomic blending brush. Now because these ink pads are really juicy, it's not a bad idea to blot off the brush on your work surface before applying the ink directly to the panel so that you don't have dark darker sections. Again, I've sped this up, but I concentrated on adding color, making the ends be darker, leaving the middle a lighter shade. Next, I took one of the glitzy silver panels and I used the ink that was left over on my brush to apply a really light coat of teal just along the bottom. And then for my third panel, the one with the teal, I added ink around the edges, leaving the center light. Now I let the ink dry, and then I turned these three panels into cards, along with a few of the reverse image panels. I played around with different layouts, and this is what I came up with for my five foiled cards. Now these stamped images haven't been colored yet, but if I still had some of the teal ones that I stamped out earlier, you really could get away with not having to color them. But these are not part of the printable, but I wanted to add a few more cards to show what all you can do with these foilable panels in the kit. This first card, I cut out three teal stitch circles in different sizes, and then I added a solid glitzy silver circle piece on top of the biggest one, and I plan to add the jellyfish on top. I stamped congrats on the medium sized circle at the bottom. For the second one, I cut out a stitched banner with one of the foilable toner sheets where I used the teal foil on top for the larger banner, and I stamped Seize the Day on a white banner using Lakeside ink. I will assemble all of these off camera, but the rest of these cards are pretty self-explanatory. Not much that I would need to explain. You can pretty much figure out what I did for these, but here are the finished cards I made with the foilable panels. I used the exclusive sequin mix that came in the Crafty Courtyard kit to decorate a few of these cards. But I just love these, these beautiful shiny cards, especially the cobalt blue. So here's a look at all of the cards again. I just love how they turned out. Some of them are more simple than others, but I just love the colors in this kit. And these under the sea images with the flowers are simply gorgeous. I'd love to know which card is your favorite down in the comments section below. Remember, you will need to sign up for the monthly subscription boxes by the 14th to guarantee that you'll get one. And if they have any left over, you can continue ordering through the end of the month until they sell out. They start shipping around the 15th. You can find a link to the free printable with these card sketches along with the cutting guides down in the description box. I really hope you like my card ideas and I hope it inspires you to get creative. Now remember, as an all-access or VIP patron as part of my membership program, you receive access to bonus printables like this free preview each month, and you get lots of other benefits too, including a handmade card from me. So you can visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's Card Challenges for more information. I'd also like to invite you to join my quarterly card making challenge number 10. It's a lot of fun, and you'll have a chance to win some amazing prizes. Challenge 10 ends on June 30th of 2023, so there's only a few weeks left to create your cards and get them submitted. But a new challenge will begin on July 1st, and I'm super excited about it. For more information about my quarterly card challenges, you can watch the video that I have linked down below, or you can also visit KendrasCardChallenges.com. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.